money, man. each and every one of you doing on this amazing Monday. I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great, even though there's not a whole lot to be happy about right now. Let's be honest. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate and support the channel. So, I get asked a lot of questions. If you're from a suburban home, why would you break the law? If you come from a so-called normal household, why would you break the law? If your family has money, why would you break the law? If people are trying to help you get off drugs, why wouldn't you get off drugs? If you have this whole support system, why didn't you change? So. In my own personal experience, anybody who's been following my channel for a long time knows that for me it was trauma that led me to the streets. So first of all, I was sexually abused and then very shortly after, my brother was charged with two counts of first degree murder. This broke my family up, divided my family and basically left some of us to fend for ourselves the years that my mom was going through the trial, the stress and the overbearing pain from that. Now, a whole chunk of my family broke off and basically just cut us off and said, you know, we don't want our kids finding out about this, so it's better just to cut that part of the family off and just forget about them, right? And eventually what happened to me was I felt neglected. Now, I, I feel like I was wrong, right? My parents had five kids. They were very overwhelmed with what was going on in life. And it wasn't fair for me to expect all the attention. But that's how I felt. I felt at the time neglected. And I looked for attention. I looked for loyalty. I looked for friendship to kind of fill that void that I, I didn't feel like I was getting from my family. And because of my behavior, you know, I used to steal a lot and I would be out all night. I wouldn't follow rules. It didn't matter what they told me. I didn't follow the rules. And they used tough love. They would kick me out of the house. They would never enable my behavior. And I always saw that as hate. I always felt like, how could you do that? How could you just turn your back on your kids? But then I'd be locked up and they'd be right there supporting me at my court dates. Anytime I need anything, they're there. And over the years, I realized that that was real support and that was real love. They just couldn't reward bad behavior. Now, that led me to the streets. I went to the streets. I was from the so-called normal life. Both of my parents are still to this day together. My family was never rich, but we had money. We weren't poor. I had everything I needed my whole life. And... I just don't really think that matters because when you're young, you're impressionable and any major event can change the growth and the development of your brain in certain ways. Like there's kind of a normal path that you're supposed to grow and when major obstacles that are freak occurrences happen and kind of take you off road, it kind of throws a spoke in the wrench. I mean a wrench in the spokes, if that makes sense. I was very lost when I was young, you know, and I was super duper duper influential or influ inf influential. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I was easily influenced and I found that camaraderie and that loyalty in the streets. And even though the guys that I was rolling with were some very, very, very serious guys, I felt like the love between us was genuine. Like, that was some real, those were my dogs. Like, I trusted them. 
I never at any point thought that they would snake me, that they would snitch on me. And I still to this day believe that about the guys that I came up with. Loyal, you know. I just changed over the years. And I realized that I wasn't that criminal. You know, I wanted at some point to live a normal life. But the drugs got me, you know, they wrapped me up and that kept me in the streets because even though people wanted to support me and even though people wanted to be there for me, I didn't see it as that. I saw it as being attacked and stigmatized and judged when really they were just trying to reach out and help. They just weren't educated enough to do it 100% properly. But I took it as hate when really it was support. And that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. That's what happens when you've experienced trauma and have PTSD. That's what happens when your brain is kind of developed a certain way. Growing up the way that I did, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And it wasn't always easy, you know. Sometimes stuff was painful. Sometimes I got hurt. Sometimes I got hurt emotional sometimes it was scary you know sometimes I learned some very valuable lessons though and I feel like because of the road that I led I am that much stronger today I feel like if everything was perfect everything my whole life was perfect I wouldn't be me I wouldn't be strong the way I am now I feel like I have a purpose and because of my purpose I had to go through those lessons that I learned. And, and I truly believe that my purpose is to share my experiences with others so that they don't have to go through those things themselves. And that is the motto of my channel. That is my motivation. That is what drives me. Now, obviously, it's not easy getting away from that life. It's not. Even if you have everything, all the support, all the backing in the world, it's not. It's enticing, it's alluring. Not having to work, making stacks of money that you can just spend frivolously. Just living the fast life, doing what you want, not having to follow any rules. It's, it's great. That much of the time. The rest of the time, you're not. You're locked up. And I don't care what anybody says, good criminal, bad criminal, eventually you're gonna end up in jail. And I also don't care what anybody says, good addict or functional addict, you're also eventually going to end up in the same place. It's just a matter of how long. I'm not here trying to preach to nobody. I'm not here trying to say that I've experienced the worst of the worst of the worst. All I'm saying is, Everybody's problems are individual to them and affect them individually. There is no one size fits all. So it doesn't really matter where you're from. It's who you are and what you've been through. You could be from the worst place, the most impoverished place, with the most violence, where you're struggling to eat every day, but still, you're brought up properly, you're brought up with love, and you're, and you're right. You could also be raised in a situation where there's millions of dollars, you'd seem like everything was there, but you're not right. Think of Dellen Millard, perfect example. Millionaire, uh, you know, parents own jet companies and all this stuff, and kills his whole family for money, you know? That kind of stuff, it, it just happens, you know? People's minds are amazing things, and sometimes stuff goes wrong. And sometimes there are situations that we go through and we experience that affect our brains dramatically. It's just how do we recover from that? How do we learn from that? Are we capable of taking that major painful experience, growing from it, learning from it, and putting our determination into action is what's going on upstairs that drives a person. It's what they've been through that affects what's going on upstairs. 
So there is no one size fits all criminal. It kind of is what it is. If you get steered that way, then it is what it is. It's a matter of getting control of it yourself and turning it around yourself because nobody else is going to do it for you. And there is no real answer to if you came up in a great home, why would you do that? Or if you came up with all this money, why would you do that? There is no real answer other than every person is an individual and things affect people differently therefore everybody's life is going to be handled differently people are going to react differently to different situations think about it like think of a school shooter okay what drives that what drives that a lot of those people didn't come from bad backgrounds where there's a ton of abuse, where there's all kinds of uh, uh, trauma and stuff, but still, people are unique. We're all different. And, uh, you know, it just kind of is what it is. If that's the path you go down, that's the path you go down. It's a matter of how you turn it around. Obviously, I share my experiences with you guys so you guys don't have to go through these things yourself. If I could snap my finger, nobody ever, ever, ever experiences prison, the criminal lifestyle, addiction, abuse, trauma, any of that stuff, then that's what I do. But that is not a reality. That, you know, if I just don't have that power and nobody has that power. But at least by sharing my stories and experiences with you guys, Maybe you guys can learn and not have to do these things yourselves. You guys hold me accountable. It forces me to be a better person, and I appreciate you guys for that every day. So, like I said, doesn't matter what your background is. Doesn't. Because it's not always the, it's not always situations from your family life that affect you and cause you to stray. It's not always situations um, from your childhood necessarily. It, it just depends. Every person is different and we just gotta learn to try to help people and try to not stigmatize and judge people and support people the right way. And there is a right way. And at the end of the day, I don't believe the best way is to enable and to just let them kind of do what they want. I believe the right way is with tough love. You don't reward bad behavior. And it took me a long time to figure it out. It really did. But I don't think it's necessarily going to take everybody as long as it took me. I'm a, I'm a hard-headed individual. And I really, truly enjoyed some of the times that I had. So it really took the addiction taking hold and kind of not making everything enjoyable for me to really want to turn it around. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all my videos. So. I don't know, this is just a video I did because I've been getting asked these questions a lot lately. You know, like I said, it's not where you're from, it's who you are. Bottom line, love each and every one of you, the new Matt Clark.